What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I hope it never fails. Anyways, welcome back to the channel. I hope y'all have another good day, you guys. Uh, this is the first video since the last time we dropped the video, uh, starting the truck up for the first time in over two months uh, after the turbo exploded. So today's video is basically going to be me explaining uh, where we're at right now in terms of troubleshooting, uh, it, the intro, it, I'm going to be, I'm going to talk for about five, maybe eight minutes. So I'll put a time to fast forward to like the actual stuff. Cause in this video today, we will be removing the injectors, all six of them. I have six brand new injectors in the garage, uh, that I will be putting on. It probably won't be today just because today's Tuesday, the day after MLK day. And I ordered a boroscope off of Amazon, uh, just so I can go, I can look inside of the cylinders just to make sure nothing crazy is going on, uh, without having to, to remove it. I kind of want to look at the five and six valves to see, make sure there's nothing lodged in there or the valves aren't seated all the way. Uh, which I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell both, both at the same time, but you understand what I'm saying? So we got that going on. All right. So what happened? So got the truck back together, started the truck up, uh, first time starting it it was running obviously it was smoky because of the situation with the turbo exploding oil got back into the engine long story short it pretty much soaked the five and six cylinder with oil uh before i started the truck i what i did was i cycled so i rotated the engine maybe about 10 times uh to get those back cylinders to push the residual oil out of the exhaust port which it did it did uh, a decent little bit came out the back um, so after the initial start, the truck, the truck was choppy. I knew it was going to be choppy because I had taken the fuel lines off the fuel rail pressure. Uh, so I knew it had to build pressure. It was going to be air in the system. So I figured it'd be a little choppy. The choppiness went away after about 10 minutes of idling. Um, so then I go for the test drive and I don't test drive until the next day. So then the next day I go for the first actual test drive of the truck, start driving. Everything's cool. Uh, and then right about 120, 120, 130 degrees temp, coolant temp, uh, oil temp, I start hearing a, a, a clicking sound, like a tapping sound. I'm like, what the heck? So I pull over. Luckily, I wasn't like getting on it or anything. I was just kind of easing into it, kind of see how, how the truck would respond. Uh, and I heard that sound. I was like, well, that's not right. So I took it back to the house. And that's pretty much the last piece you guys saw. I probably put a little clip in showing my like the last like scene. I know it's been about a week uh, or two since I put that out. Um, immediately went to the drawing board, went back, double check all my work, making sure I didn't do something wrong on my install. Which I, I mean, I've I've done second, I've done these jobs plenty of times to where I was like I was tripping. I was like, there's no way I like messed something up. Like. You know, one of the one of the easiest things, the first thing to think about, especially when you do a grid here delete, because you open up your entire intake plenum, is did I leave something in there, like a nut, a washer, a gasket, something, right? I know I didn't do that. Uh, I'm very anal when it comes to that stuff. Uh, even while we were waiting to build the, or for the turbo to come in, get it powdered, I had my intercooler installed, I had my hot side pipe installed, and I had the grid here delete installed with no intake. Uh, I had rags in each one of those because I, I just didn't want that odd occurrence of something getting in there that shouldn't be in there. Uh, and yes, I removed the rags before I put everything back together. So I got obviously online, started doing research. Uh, I put a video, a little YouTube short up running an injector test. Uh, it was like a minute and a half long. A lot of people commented. Uh, thank you guys so much, by the way, for the feedback you guys make you guys make me want to make videos when i get the, the feedback like that uh tons of people came messaging me uh commenting you know things to check and whatnot uh so this is where i'm at with the truck right now so and it might not sound normal but it makes sense though right so i don't like that glare so what was I going to say? So, right. So, what happened? So, when the turbo exploded, obviously, I was on the highway. So, the truck just poured oil into the back cylinders, right? And if I'm correct, I'm pretty sure when air enters the cylinder, it goes into the six first, the rear. And then it works its way to the front, I think. I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that's probably how it works. Just based off looking at the head when it's removed, like the intake plenum, right? Um... So I believe just because of the occurrence, right? Turbo explodes, truck sits for two months, oil's all in the back cylinders, five and six, right? 
I believe that the oil sitting back there somehow, some way, clogged those injectors or just messed them up, right? Uh, I believe the five, the number six cylinder injector is stuck open. I believe the solenoid on it is shot and is stuck open to the point where like it's not pulling back fuel or it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not coming back. Uh, so the way it works is when I first crank the truck, it won't make the sound. It won't. It sounds like a regular old truck. And then maybe about once it gets to about 120 degrees, that's when it starts to come in. All right. Now I know some people are saying, well, that might be a wrist pin. Well, hold on a sec. So after about 120, 130 degrees temp, it starts, the, the sound comes right. And the warmer it gets, it gets a little bit more pronounced, but under acceleration, if I give the truck RPMs to like, if it's idling and I rev it up to like 1800, 2000, it goes away. It goes away and it just, it stays there. And then when I take my foot off the pedal, I look at the RPM gauge, go back down. And if you got good injectors, right, where they're responding on time, when you take your pedal off, your foot off that pedal, that RPM gauge should just, it should come back nice and smooth. Mine wasn't doing that. Mine was kind of coming back, but like hanging up and then it was coming back, uh, which tells me the fueling is not, it's not responding to what the, uh, the rail pressure and the injection pump and the computer is telling it to do right so i honestly believe and i'm real curious to see how the injector those back ones look when i pull them out today i honestly believe that that five that number five or six especially the six is stuck open somehow some way it happened right um another thing i also feel or believe could have happened was because all that oil was in there i believe and i'm gonna find out when i do my valve springs but i believe one of those valves might be sticking as well right because it sounds like that right the truck idles smooth right it's no choppiness to it it's not shaking it's not the engine is still like when it's running it's just there just chilling right um if it was a hard part right like a, a drop rock it's not a drop valve or anything like that but like a drop valve valve seat right that thing is going to tear up that piston in the back like it's going to sound like a a nut, basically a nut got destroyed in there. Like it's just going to be, it's not going to idle good. Right. Because at that point, your piston injector, your, or your piston, the inject, the bowl, right. It's going to be all chewed up to the point where you're, it's not that, that cylinder bank is not going to combust correctly. It's going to be all sorts of inefficient and, and it's just going to sound different. Right. So this is where we're at. So essentially going to change the injectors. I will be changing the push rods as well. So I'm going to pull all my push rods, inspect them just to see if any are bent or at the bottom of them, if they're some sort of wear, unusual wear. So we will be pulling the push rods as well. Uh, I will be doing valve springs, but I won't do the valve springs until later. Okay. So check it out. The injectors I got, like there's no, I have no shame or I really don't care. There's just some cheap Amazon uh, injectors, right? Like they have reviews on them people use them they say it works yada yada right like i don't i'm not gonna spend three thousand dollars on a set of stock injectors reason being is because last week i went ahead and and talked to flux and i'm now on the list uh to get 100 percent over injectors so i'm not gonna drop crazy money on stock injectors i'm gonna run for two months and then take out right yeah i can sell them but it's not the same so i push my my energy towards 100% over injectors because ultimately that's what we're going to put in this truck anyways for this turbo right so these and these injectors are just pretty much troubleshooting slash get the truck rolling make sure the truck's going to be fine right nothing crazy uh so that's where we're at now so today a couple things i'm going to be doing uh we're going to be taking off the or we're essentially doing injectors so if we come over here right so we're gonna be taking the intake off, obviously, because I need to get to that number one injector, right? So we're gonna take off the intake. This is coming off, valve cover's coming off, uh, rocker box is coming off, so I can get access to the injectors. Uh, before I mess with any of this stuff, something I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna be trying to clock this compressor cover a little bit more to get it off that hot pipe right there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll take off the intake, take this off, and then I'm going to need to loosen the band clamp that connects the boot to the intercooler. And I'm going to come up here and loosen this band clamp for the compressor cover housing. And I'm going to see if I can get it. I mean, it doesn't need to go much. It only needs like, 
I want to say like a quarter of an inch and it'll be good uh, just to get it off that that hot wire right there because that I am not a huge fan of that at all and Installing this hot pipe was not cool at all. I know they naturally suck on these trucks But this pipe wasn't a fan how it was made by a uh, point zero But nonetheless, this is what we're doing, right? Uh, the truck looks good though, and it does run right and when I took her for a drive I heard the turbo and she sounds really good and oh that's another thing i forgot to mention too so the uh god dang it so when i drove the truck the it, it, it drives but i honestly it does not feel like it has all this power like the responsiveness in terms of throttle pedal all that stuff is it seems like it's, it's something's missing man so something fuel is definitely going on with this uh system in terms of how exactly it could have happened I have no idea. You guys can drop a comment uh, if you guys suspect what could have caused those back injectors to fail. I really believe that the little solenoid on the back one is is something's wrong. It's malfunctioning, so it is what it is. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to work now. It's been I said five to eight minutes. It's pushing eleven minutes now in this intro. But I just wanted to get you guys caught up, let you guys know everything that's going on because I know. I had that last video and I hadn't posted anything since then, so I kind of left you guys hanging. But I appreciate all the people who reached out to help me, give me advice, all that stuff. Um, you guys know who you are, man. It's too many of y'all to name off the top of my head. And then we might, next time we put this valve cover on, this won't be going on. We're going to be putting on the uh, SPE Lab billet valve cover. Got something cool going on with them again. So the valve cover we have currently, long story short, I'm not going to powder that one. And I'll tell you guys why, or you guys might just see why later. But besides that, man, you guys, I mean, my mind was running when it came to this ticking sound and stuff, man. Like, I was seriously, like, just like, man, there's no way I, I messed something up. Like, I've done this job so many times, right? So, this is where I'm at now. If you guys think there's anything else I missed or could be a potential, let me know. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just go from there. All right, y'all. So, I did a little... I was doing a little troubleshooting uh, for this hot side pipe. Uh, I was able to get it off of there. I know it doesn't look like it, but now it's like it's not pressed against it, right? But anyways, we're going to have a new hot side pipe sent out by Point Zero Fab. Uh, he was super cool about it, man. He, I told him what was happening. He gave me some tips. I did it. wasn't working, uh, and he was all about, like, fixing the issue. Like, you know what I'm saying? He ain't like other people or, like, some people you deal with where they refuse to believe that their product is uh their product is like faulty or something right so we're gonna ha get a new hot pipe sent out uh with a little nice upgrade on it as well uh that he's taking care of us so don't gotta worry about that no more so now we're over here obviously you can see i took the injector cover off uh or the valve cover off I'm gonna take off the injector harness now with the eight mil ratchet uh and take these little nuts off on all the injectors so that way we can start pulling the injectors. And then after I take that off, I'm gonna start taking off the intake horn, get that out the way, and then fuel lines come off, take the fuel lines off, and then once we get around that part, I'll probably show you guys what we got going on. That way if anybody has questions. A uh, little pro tip, do not use power tools when taking those nuts off, all right? Use just a ratchet, right? Light torque. These things get torqued to 11 inch pounds. So it's super fragile, uh, especially if you're gonna be like, reinstalling your injectors right because if you mess around and snap one of those studs off you gotta get a new injector there's no way to fix that so take your time don't use power tools on this one that's just a little personal tip from myself dang that thing look good in the sunlight y'all see that thing right there so back to the drawing board uh and yeah once we get to a good point get this out the way and all that stuff i'll get back with y'all all right, you guys, so now I am going to go ahead and, well, actually, you can see what I've done already. Took the intake off. That was fun. Uh, on those banks in intakes, man, this middle bolt here, it's a, it's a SOB. It really is. Um, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take off all the valves. Before I take the valves off, because I'm going to be changing the push rods, right, I went ahead and set the engine to TDC already. So TDC for the number top dead center for the number one valve exhaust valve. Okay. So real quick, if we look down here, see that yellow mark, that yellow mark 
is the top dead center mark on the uh, harmonic balancer. So I went ahead and rotated the engine, got that at the 12 o'clock pointing straight up to the sky, and then now we have this. So now I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Now when you take these off, you want to make sure you leave your valves in the same orientation, right? So don't be mixing up your hardware. So that dimple, those dimples should be facing all the same direction. And if I'm correct, I believe those dimples all should be facing towards the injector. Uh, so that one right there is wrong and I never even touched that one ever before so I'm gonna do my research to verify that but I'm pretty sure they're all supposed to be pointing that way so all right I'm gonna have to take all these valve these valves off or these rocker arms and then from there we're gonna take off the fuel lines all the injector lines are gonna have to come off get the uh, fuel rail out of the way and go from there okay all right y'all so update went ahead obviously the fuel rail is completely out took that out took the fuel lines off all of them uh, the only thing I left in here are the injectors themselves the B nuts that hold the feed tubes going into the injectors and the push rods okay so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and so pretty much when it's time to remove it and I'm gonna show you guys I'm gonna set the tool up take your B nuts off brake torque unscrew them pull out your connecting feed tubes and then come over here unbolt your injector hold down bolts right here and then some people will use like pliers pull them out I purchased a injector puller off of Amazon for like a hundred bucks I think it's a lot safer and it's a lot it's, it's pretty it's pretty easy to use so I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up for y'all kind of show y'all how how to work that uh, and then we're gonna start popping these injectors out one by one all right, you guys, I'm going to show you how to um, remove a injector, okay? So I already went ahead and removed the number one. Uh, this is going to be on the two just because I wanted to practice with the tool because it's been a minute since I used it. So first things first, if you didn't take your rocker pedestal off, go ahead and get that out of the way. Now, the way I'm doing it is using the puller. You'll see videos of people using, uh, like, needle nose pliers, right? Nothing wrong with that, right? You can use, if you can get them out, get them out. Uh, I like using the tool just because it prevents something bad from happening, I guess you can say. Uh, but this is a super simple process. So go ahead, take the bee nut off the, the feed tube, right? Get that out. I think I'm going to order some new ones because these ones look like they have seen better days. But at the same time, they might just need to get cleaned up. Soak them in some diesel or something. So get your, bee, get your bee nut out the way. This is a, I'm using a 15, 16 socket uh, to get this off. All right, bee nuts out the way. Next thing, go ahead and take your connecting, your, I keep saying connecting tube, take your feed tube off. You can't, sometimes you can pull them out by hand if you've got that type of grip. Uh, I like to just get needle nose pliers, put them on the end here and kind of just pry it out like this. Another trick too is get your fuel line, uh, screw it back on here, and use the fuel line and grab it out, kind of like a slide hammer almost. Uh, but this is super easy, so you just grab it, pull it out, just like that. You should not be fighting to get your connecting your feed tubes out. God damn it, I did it again. This one doesn't look bad. So I'll show you the first one. So this is the first one. I don't know if the camera can pick up the difference but it's dirty like all along here I almost wonder if uh, these were torqued to spec I have a weird feeling and I'll show you guys the injectors once we get them off in the garage I have a feeling somebody was in here at one point for injector work I don't I don't believe these were stock injectors anyways next thing you're gonna do feed tubes out be nuts off go ahead and take off your injector hold down 8 mil take that off we'll set that to the side so now that that's off I come in here with my device and again you don't have to buy this I did because it just makes sense to me I don't know um, but what you want to do is the reason why you move the pedestal out the way is so you can screw this in you don't have to screw it in all the way just just enough so that's pretty much it bottomed out right there now I come with my tool 
and I bring my tool and you guys can't really see but I bring my tool and then I kind of slap it here once you figure out the, this tool it's really not that bad um, all I do is I'll slide it I'll slide it over and just let it sit there and I'll just push down on this handle while it's grabbing the injector and it should push it straight up there we go go ahead and undo the machine see that's super quick and it's really nice when you're back there by the number five and six injector so you're not fighting and just like that the injector is out make sure uh, make sure that your copper washer comes off with it if it doesn't it's inside of there and it's very important that you take that out do not install double copper washers on uh, this inject on these injectors you know what I'm saying but right off the rip the camera focus there we go that it's definitely seen some work I want to say these are either stock or at some point maybe they got changed but if these are stock these are 167,000 mile worth of uh, injector wear I mean the, cr the crush washer that copper washer is like on there so that's how you take your injector off so now you just do the, the rest of them or whichever ones you want to change you know what I'm saying so we're gonna keep pushing um, get these out and then take the push rods out and at that point we'll kind of be done we'll be at a standstill until my boroscope comes in so I can kind of inspect the inside of the uh, the valves on the cylinder head and inspect the inside of the pistons all right guys all right you guys so before let's see if I can get some good lighting before I go inside to show you guys the rest of the injectors I wanted to show you the number six before I, I even you know I didn't touch them I didn't wipe them down the way they look is the way I pulled them out I'm just trying to get a good focus for you guys so right here this is it uh, don't know what that black stuff is maybe some crud or something I don't know <clears throat> but the biggest thing that looked different for me with this injector is the tip okay so the tip uh, I mean just look at that I'm trying to keep the camera as still as possible for y'all so you can see but it's very wet that six one was super wet uh, compared to the other ones and I'll show you guys on the inside when we go inside here the nozzle is there I don't know if it's functioning properly but it was super wet and it has like some weird I try to get it in the sunlight for y'all it's hard to the reflection is making it hard to pick up but this was the six though the four looked bad and the four looked pretty much like this the rest of them looked better um, and then another thing too right there the date I believe that is the manufacturer date 14-02-19 so I want to say uh, year month and day I think that's the way they do it kind of similar to uh, military time or military calendar so 2014 February and then on the 9th is either when these got made or inspected or something there's some etching on top above it but it's kind of hard to make out because it's like halfway on that ridge and then the other half of it's underneath of it uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say these are the original injectors and if they aren't maybe well they have to be man because based off that date 14 because this is a 2014 model um, unless they changed out the injectors pretty much as soon as the truck was made right I really want to be petty I can look at when this truck got assembled I want to say it got built beginning of January, January of 14, because it's also 2014, so usually the year before. Uh, but Cummins does that thing where they actually make their trucks the year they make them, because I don't think they start the year model for that one until the summer. So, like, for instance, I believe we can't buy a 24 yet. The 24s aren't out yet. And, I mean, it might be. I don't know. I, I haven't been keeping up with them. But you guys comment, man. I know some of you guys have experience seeing this stuff. Um, this first time I've, I've done injectors before, but this is the first time I'm pulling them out injectors due to being faulty on the Cummins. I have done this plenty of times on the 6.0 Power Stroke. I'm actually really good at pulling those injectors. 
So, I just want you guys to see this. I want to see if I can show you in the light. There we go. You guys see that? Like. She ain't gonna focus. Okay, there we go. Right there. There it is. You guys see that stuff? Like, I've never seen that before. Please comment if you guys know anything about this. I highly believe something was not right with this injector, though. It just doesn't even look the same like the rest. The tip doesn't look the same like the rest of them, minus the four. The four looks close to this one. Like, it almost looks like... Now I'm gonna touch it real quick, because I want to see... Yeah, dude, that's like hard, that's like hard carbon rust, like. Uh, I lost my focus. There we go. That's like hard carbon rust right there, y'all. So I just wanted to show you guys this gonna go in uh, compare them to the rest the lighting in my garage is not as good as natural light so all right you guys so we're in the garage now I'm gonna try my best to show you guys the injector so uh, order is one two three four five six so I, you guys just saw six now uh, I guess I'll show I'll take it off to take you guys off the mountain real quick I was gonna had you guys on the tripod so if we are looking at these injectors Okay, that's the number one, number two, two looks probably the most decent out of all of them, number three, so three has that stuff on it too, they all, it's like, and that stuff man, I'll grab my pick real quick, that stuff is like hard. I mean, all of this is normal. That's carbon soot. But that orange looking stuff is weird. So, that's five. Sorry, four. That's four, five. And then six. Six, definitely. Now, remember, these are the two where oil was in the back mainly in the six but there was some oil in, in the number five uh, cylinder from when the turbo blew you guys let me know man another thing I was thinking about too was that because the six is the hottest cylinder or like it's the, it, it naturally is hotter back there than the front I, I, I kind of assume that it would have a little more you know stress or whatever it may be called on there uh, just because the natural environment that it's in. But who knows? Again, all these injectors have eh, it's super. They all have the same date stamped on them. The 1429. For this one, you can't really see it. But and I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong with somebody, but isn't that the Chrysler logo or Mopar? I don't remember if it is or not nowhere on here does it say Bosch though but I'm sure there's a code apparently you scan the, the companies can scan the QR codes and it pulls the data Bosch it pulls the data up for them in regards to the specific injectors um, that's what from what I've been reading I'll show you the top the top has weird little codes on it little numbers and stuff so they all look the same in terms of that um, so, yeah, these are the injectors. Again, this one had that black stuff on it, which I'm sure was just crud for the number six. The rest of the bodies look normal. And then what I'm going to do is I'll show you guys the new injectors I have, um, in the house. I got to go grab those. Injector hold downs are here. These are all the old push tubes, um, or feed tubes. Uh, this one is a six because it's the nastiest. I remember pulling that out, but in terms of the actual tubes themselves, they all look fine. 
and then we pull the push rods so we come over here now i've never had to change a bent push rod before they all look straight to me um i've laid them down on the table rolled them to see if it has an imbalance in it they all look good but this this, this number six one though I don't know if it, it might be my eyes playing tricks on me because I've been staring at them too long. But I'm, number six looks like it has the ever so smallest little un, imbalance to it, if to say so. So injector lines are off. So I'm very meticulous when I do this stuff, right? Injectors, valve train, right? Your valve train, it's good practice to reinstall everything in the exact same position that it was when taking it off, right? You're talking uh, dynamic components, right? Components that set in, they're wearing specifically where they sit now can you install these any order and it'll be fine there's a good chance but it's just good housekeeping good practice uh you know being efficient injector lines the cool thing about your injector lines is it's kind of hard to mess them up because they have to go a certain way but i still lay mine out in order so from here is one two three four five and then the six right fuel rail it's chilling um I inspect it, so I'll show you guys now. So, one, one, two, three. Where we at? Where we at? Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so six. So over here, I went ahead and just pulled these apart, just to make sure they were good. They look perfectly fine. Nothing crazy. No marring or. Uh, oh, that might not be good now. <laughs> no marring or anything. Let me put this down before I mess around and break something. Um, I inspected all of the seats, right? So when you take your valves, your rockers off, inspect these seats uh, to make sure they're not cracked. It's not really common on these uh, six sevens. Um, I know on the power strokes they use plastic ones, I think, uh, on the six O's and six fours. But inspect all these little seats to make sure that they're not cracked or damaged. They should be able to free float like that, right? Now these push tubes or push rods, they're non-oiling, so you're not going to have a hole in the center. For oil to come up, you know what I'm saying? It's just gonna kind of sit there, or it's just it's a what's the word? These they're not hydraulic lifters, so we don't have hydraulic lifters. They didn't start that to the fifth gen. So on the fifth gen push rods, you'll see a hole coming in here because the oil is gonna oil the hydraulic lifters. It pushes the oil up, which is why you don't have to do valve lash. We don't we don't have that uh, option, which based off of the readings, I'm kind of happy that we don't, but. That's a separate conversation. So like I was saying before, with these rocker bridges, these dots, I got to look it up. But I'm pretty sure that the dot should be facing towards the injector or like towards the intake side of the engine. Uh, one of them was pointing towards the, it was pointing towards the turbo side, the hot side. So we'll get that straightened out. They all look good though. You know, when you grab them, look underneath, just look at the feet, the pads to make sure they're not cracked or anything crazy. So... This is where we at. Old ones are out. Uh, let me go get the new ones and I'll show you the new ones side by side. All right, you guys. So here's one of the brand new injectors we have. Um, again, like I said, I'm not afraid to admit it, but these are some basically just Amazon Chinese injectors. They come with a one year warranty. Um, they claim that they're fully balanced, all that good stuff. So, again, if you didn't hear me in the beginning why I'm doing this route, um, it's because these aren't going to be in for long, man. And who knows, maybe they end up working really good. I don't know. But I can tell you right now, these look a lot better than uh, what I have behind them. So, brand everything's brand new. Uh, in terms of, we basically, we just going to find out what these <laughs> what these going to do uh, when it's time to put them in. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> We'll figure that out. Got O-rings. They come with O-rings. They come with the brand new copper or the crush washers. So let y'all get a look, a good look on this. A little QR code. The body has this number on it. Oh, I guess that's a date. Yeah, twenty-three. June or sorry July 28 so these got made last year interesting it's a little scuffing right there that's probably from when they oh no it's not these definitely got tested though because they smell I can smell like the yeah it's like pretty much like kerosene it smells like kerosene or 
Yeah, pretty much. So, we're going to find out what these can do. You figure if any if a company is willing to give something a warranty, got a one-year warranty, manufacturer defect, unlimited mileage. So, you figure they got to be worth something. The holes are so small to see on these things. I don't even know where the holes are at. Oh, I see them. Wow, those are tiny. Holy smokes. Those things are tiny little suckers. So your holes, your injector, if you ever wanted to know or care. My camera wants to focus. Whatever. So your injector nozzles. Oh, there we go. It's right there. Right, I'm not going to touch it, but it's right around that tip. All going around it. I think there's like five or six holes. I never knew. I never even cared to look before. But all right, I'm going to close this up just because I don't want this uh, being exposed to the elements for too long. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back up. But I did get six of them, right? And again, you can judge me. Say what you want to say about the whole knockoff or no-name brand injectors. But... It is what it is. I'm not stressing it. So these are going to go in once the boroscope comes in tomorrow so I can inspect the inside of the cylinders. Once I inspect the inside and I'm, you know, as long as there's nothing crazy, we'll put these in. I believe the brand new uh, feed tubes came in today. I got a notification on my phone. I just got to check my mailbox. And then we'll have brand new feed tubes. I'm really debating ordering uh, <laughs> new injector lines, but I might try soaking these maybe in diesel. A comment let me know what should I do for to clean up my injector lines just so, get a bucket of diesel drop them in let them soak overnight need any tips much appreciated that is the box of the injectors there so they actually came in pretty quickly too but yeah drop a comment drop a comment on that for me you guys camera's about to die finally but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed the video again this is like troubleshooting right now so any tips or advice would be much appreciated i will drop a video or a clip of the truck sounding right i found a dude on youtube he legitimately uploaded videos his name's the general with the same symptoms like my truck and it ended up being his number six so drop a comment let me know you guys until next time thank you guys so much for joining make sure you smash the like button all that good stuff drop a comment and until next time i'll see you guys later take care and peace out